Hey y'all, Monk Joseph here with the Broken Buddha. Today I just want to talk really quick on uh, understanding uh, ancient religion. We'll see if I can do this in like five minutes or less. I got to keep it short and simple because it gets very, uh, very complex the further you go into these things. I want to keep this as simple as possible. Um, really quick, I'm getting the majority of this information from my Shaktism studies. Shaktism is arguably the oldest form of Hinduism going back 22,000 years. Do your own research. Don't, don't, you know, take what I say as like law or anything, you know. Um, all right, so let's just get into it. It's really not that complex. So all religion in existence concepts typically have the same core ideals where there are arguably three or four things you know most religions will say there are three um but i would say humans are the fourth thing identified in religion all right because all religion is supposed to identify what we're experiencing yes so you have the bindu or a god like a head being you have an understanding of time and space uh and then you have the unknown or esoteric which can also be obstacles um, which I relate to as a reflection of being human. And again, this is my personal theory on religion based on everything that I've studied, gathered from Hinduism, Shaktiism, Taoism, Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism. All right. So again, we're talking about those things. All right. And again, we'll say a Bindu, time and space, which should be separated really. And then uh, the esoteric. And if you want to separate the human from the unknown, that's fine. But that's I kind of lump those two together. But again, they should be separated like time and space. So let's go into my shrine so I can explain these things to you. Um, yeah, and even just walking in, you know, Lord Buddha is an example of both the esoteric, um, the request for the esoteric and for the expression of humanism in that. Vasuki is an expression of time or infinity, if you will, if you're not familiar um, again, you'll see why it's lumped together. So let's go in here. I think I have just enough light to, I got to turn these things off real quick. It's going to cause noise pollution. There we go. All right. So let's go into my shrine real quick. Don't mind. I'm, uh, making tea, uh, for offerings and stuff. Anyway, so let's go into this, right? So I said, there's only four things, arguably three things. Let's talk about those things real quick. All right. So for me, my Bindu that I understand is Lakshmi or a goddess, but again, we're talking about a point. Okay, don't focus so much on the gender aspect of the thing. So the Bindu, then you have space and time. Narayana sitting on Shisha or um, Vishnu sitting on Shisha, however you want to look at it, the being is an expression of all space and matter that you see. The snake it's sitting on is a representation of time or infinity. So as you can see, space and time are lumped together in this one idea. And then if you go over to Lord Ganesha, you get the ideas of like esotericism and knowledge, which again, eventually gets turned into, you know, I believe became a wealth deity at times, but everything you see is an expression of those three to four things. So again, the three things are, if you believe in the three things, a Bindu or origin point, all of space and time and or the esotericism that I associate to as being human and what we have to discover and find in that process. And everything is a, is a variation of these three things. Again, space and time are separate entities that should be understood separately when understanding these things. And the request for esotericism and the experience of esotericism that is our existence should be perceived as differently. So let's go through this and identify the three things with the posters that I have. Okay. Tara, Manjushri. All right. So goddess, esotericism or humanity being Manjushri, space and time, Vajrapani. Esotericism, knowledge, and humanity. As uh, da, 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 hold on a second. Jambala, uh, Kubera, also known as Vaishravana, which is also an emanation of Ganesha. This is an emanation of the Bindu, uh, as I see it as a goddess. You may see it as a male I, I, iconography or ideology. Uh, we have space and time because you have all of physical space, and then you see the Naga here, equaling conquering of either infinity or the fear of infinity. Uh, being guided by the esotericism of the Buddhas. Uh, the other figures on my shrine we didn't cover, that is a uh, Buddha or an, a human, but it's, again, it's still an expression of the esotericism of humanity. Same thing with Shards of Tashi Gaelchen. What else? Samantha Bhadra is an expression of space and awareness, which I would still associate as space and time. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, the uh, Amitabha being from a different system of worlds is exactly what they say he is. I don't necessarily – it doesn't fit into the original uh, Hindu pantheon. And I'm still reading the Lotus Sutra. So I'm still studying 
I'm still learning. I did explain all of ancient uh, religion in five minutes, so I did the best I could with this, guys. Um, again, after the Chinese New Year video, I just wanted people to have some understanding of what these things are because people get so carried away with like occultish ideas, mystical ideas, and like the most amazing mystical thing you can ever experience is to be human and all that's encompassed, including opening your third eye and or achieving enlightenment and or just understanding what you are, you know, uh, trillions upon trillions of self-replicating cells that can love and speak on a rock moving in four unfathomable directions at the same time. I mean, there's no way to see our existence other than miraculous. So to look somewhere else for a miracle, uh, you're looking the wrong direction. And that's all I'll say about this. All right. So thanks for stopping by. There's my breakdown. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Peace and blessings.